Hey guys, it's Adam from Tested, and today I have a brand new one day build. <sighs> Where to begin? Blade Runner. I love Blade Runner, we all know this. I love Blade Runner 2049, and I'm kind of obsessed with Deckard's binoculars, and lucky for me, someone on the internet did a beautiful build of Deckard's binoculars and made all the files accessible uh, and available to the public. Here is just three of those parts. Um, this was done at Instructables by Jonatron. That's his username at Instructables. He's an amazing maker whose name is actually Jonathan Odom, and I'm a big fan of his work. And he included not only detailed build instructions for making Deckard's binoculars, but he included the STL files for 3D printing them, and he built the whole thing around a working monocular magnifier from Amazon, $15. This fits into this so that your Deckard binoculars can actually work. I can barely contain my excitement. I've been like, pre I've been prepping this build all week, just thinking about little ways to make it even better. Um, and I have a few mods even above and beyond what uh, Jonathan has included in this. But first up and foremost is to wash these parts. These parts were not printed on a filament printer. They were printed on a carbon 3D printer, which is born out of a bath of resin and uses light and oxygen to make its prints. And there is sometimes some residue on these post the baking process. And I need to wash that off if I'm gonna prime it and start assembly. So here we go. I haven't heard that sound before. That's just me jumping with excitement. Deckard's binoculars, here we go. Okay, now, while I wait for the rest of these parts to dry, I have some heavy modifications to do before I even start priming and painting. There are a couple of aspects to this build that Jonathan, despite his wonderful uh, expertise as a maker, got a little bit off because he didn't have enough reference material. Uh, first and foremost, his binoculars are actually flipped horizontally 180 from the reel, so they're actually a mirror image of the actual binoculars. I changed that when uh, I had my friend run these in the carbon 3D printer. But also, um, Jonathan didn't see the uh, left side of the binoculars, this side, like that. And because he didn't, he got this plate wrong. So I'm going to grind this plate off uh, and then add this, uh, this other, other part and um, we'll get going. So there's a little ridge here that I've got to replicate. And then where he has this plate going all the way across, it's got a diagonal here. So I've got to grind this plate off and then grind that diagonal in. Because I should be able to do that without harming this thing too much. I'm gonna, uh, oh, I know how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this on my mill. That will be nice and stable. Okay, here we go. Tighten down, turning up, turning up a little high. No, it's not a grind. I've actually got to take it down. Cool, okay. That's good, that's good, I'm happy with that. Okay, time to turn it over. I'm also gonna do some machining on the underside because I wanna put in, well, any binoculars like this would have a quarter 20 input in the bottom, like a camera input. So I'm gonna put one in here because I wanna make mine even more like real world. So 
So I made this part yesterday. This is the part that will hold the quarter inch stud and that fits right in the part that I just machined in the bottom beautifully. Excellent. I just have to trim the little corners. All right. I am also putting a battery in here and that means I've got to cut a battery door. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. All right, got to glue the battery compartment in. Oh, right. There's a lot of little mods I am making to this. There's also a section I can see from underneath where I took pictures at the Blade Runner premiere um, where this is actually a step in. So I'm going to cut that out and put a little bit of styrene behind it to create that step in. A lot of little details. Good, good, I'm happy with that. Now, this thing is not that tall, so I think it's gonna be. I'm gonna glue these into place. That's totally reasonable to do now. Yeah, it is? Yes, it is. It is, really? Yeah, it is. I'm pretty sure. Are you really sure? I'm pretty sure. All right, here we go. Gluing it into place. All right. I have completed the two little buttons on the side that are not in Jonatron's original build. Now these go on the... They go on a board for stuff that gets painted black. Let's put it that way. For as sloppy as I like to say that I am as a builder, one of my big failings as a maker is um, I tend to make my tolerances too tight. I tend to do that. So I'm trying to make sure I'm not doing that so that this thing actually goes together in the right way. All right, here we go. Fits. And it does. The battery compartment clears. The viewer, awesome. So I'm uh, trying to make the screws that will attach my battery door, but I haven't given myself a lot of space, which is totally customary for me. Um, and the way I'm solving that problem is by uh, adding some baking soda to my cyanoacrylate glue. Now, you might not know this, but baking soda is an accelerant for CA glue. And it, uh, it actually provides some structural... Uh, strength. So take a look in here. You'll see I've got a little pile of CA glue 
with the, the baking soda in it. The baking soda actually provides almost a dimensional gusset, and I've used this technique many times. It creates an acrylic paste, if you will, that uh, I'm going to use to thread the 256 screw holes that will hold my battery compartment door onto this model. There are more elegant ways to do this, but um, this is the quick and dirty way. So what I just did was, there was a part on Jonatron's build that was this little, uh, clearly a surface detail meant to look like a spinning dial, like a little spinning wheel. I replaced it with an actual spinning wheel. What is this stuff? This is called pinion wire. Um, and this is a cutoff chunk from the motor driver from my Hellboy Mecha hand. Yeah, that's how far back we're going. Uh, and I just installed it so that it actually fits in here so it will be a live, movable part of the actual build. Yay, just a little more functionality for me, for no reason than I can figure. I'm about to glue a little detail part that I don't ever want to fall off. So I'm doing what's called toothing up the glue. I'm putting scrapes where the glue will be contacting the plastic. And each time I do this, I'm creating, if you can imagine, a tiny little valley, tiny little valley, a tiny little scrape, which increases the surface area and gives more oomph for the glue to grab the plastic. All right, now I have a little more engineering to do on this front plate because I am adding in an external switch so that I can turn on the electronics that I'm putting into my uh, Blade Runner binoculars. And that, there are a couple of little um, doohickeys right here, these two little dudes. And this bottom one, the big one, is actually gonna be a push button on off switch that I've got that will be play, that I got here. Whoop, whoop. Look at how tiny these little puppies are, yeah. I have already wired one up and actually attached a little bit of brass to it. Um, there we go, that will be my switch. So, time for a little engineering. All right, so here's my on off switch. And that is on, that is off. Isn't that a nice little subtle detail? Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, okay, I'm not gluing that in just yet. I'm gonna glue that in after I paint this, but that is another bit of engineering done on the front piece. We are barreling forward. We started this at 11, we're now four hours in, and I did a couple of days of pre-prep on this. I just like thinking through so like I wouldn't get caught off guard. But it really feels like about 40 minutes has passed for me. Time flies with these builds. I can work on that. Now, uh, one of the key features of binoculars is of course the part that you look through. And uh, the binoculars in Blade Runner 2049 have a, a kind of a hood on them, right? And uh, Jontron 
did this using craft foam. He made a template for the hood using craft foam. But my problem is, is I look at the craft foam and it doesn't quite sell as a commercial product to me. And I want this prop to work for me personally. I want it to feel like I'm holding a real piece of equipment. So I'm going to use this. And I haven't used this on tested before, I don't think. This is Kydex. This is used for things like gun holsters and knife holsters. It is a thermal plastic with a low softening point, but a higher melting point than styrene. With styrene, you get it soft and you're very close to having it be like taffy. But with Kydex, you can get it very soft and use that to press it and keep on heating it and keep on molding it until it's exactly the way you want it. It's really pretty cool to play with. So I have made I told you I did a little pre-prep on this. I have made a buck that fits my face that I will use as a shaping buck for this strip of Kydex. Kydex tends to have a tendency in my experience to shrink a little bit. Uh, when you heat it. So it is always good to give yourself a little bit of extra room. I'm sure there are Kydex experts out there yelling at me for all sorts of stuff, but those are just the simple things I know about Kydex. <laughs> Kydex tends to cut and snap similar to styrene. So it's just as easy to trim although it's a little bit more tenacious. It's really good stuff. I've only bought a couple of sheets and played with it a little bit, but enough to know that I really like it. Ah, that's garbage. It didn't make it in, did it? No. <laughs> it never does. <sighs> I'm gonna heat this up, and I'm gonna heat it up in a new piece of uh, Adam Savage shop equipment. Let's check it out. This is my new lab oven. Yeah, I had to do some baking of some pieces recently and I was looking into high capacity toaster ovens and I was already in the like over $250 for the ones that I was looking at and I realized for a little more, I could get a 450 degree capable lab oven that heats up quickly and allows me to go as gentle as 130 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really nice. So I've got it set at about 200 right now, and that should soften up my Kydex pretty well in about 20 minutes. Most of the parts are good. Oh, I wanna hit those with a gloss coat. What am I doing over here? Oh, I was just happening to check these. I came over to check the oven. Oh, look at that. Okay, here we go. So. What? So I've now mostly got my Kydex bent around the form and I'm in the process of just smoothing it out and going in and making sure each part is, is working. There's that little bump there. This is how you can take care of it. You can have very granular control over it. It's not even hot enough to burn me, but it is hot enough to move it and give me a, yeah, okay. So you see how these are bumpy? Boop, boop, boop. I'm gonna fix those right now. I'm really, really enjoying what a forgiving material Kydex is. It is really quite lovely. That is, that looks like a, like a, like a part. Because I want really gentle curves around the inside of this, I made, I made it too long so I could scale it back and make it smooth. Because I want really gentle curves, I'm using a big fat flap uh, sander for the Dremel at a low speed. And this gives me some like nice fine control of sanding without doing too much removal. That's the biggest problem here is that you remove too much somewhere, you have to keep on removing.
So even though the green and the red are matte in color and the final product is matte, I'm still giving them a coat of clear matte finish because it tends to deepen the, the paint job a little bit. It makes it look a little more dimensional and that also makes it look a little more pro. I am also going to, uh, no, that's not it. I am also going to clear coat some of these black parts. Should be almost ready to assemble in like 10 minutes. Now, there is a strap as part of the binoculars, and while all animal products are gone in the Blade Runner universe, and clearly the strap in the movie must have been rubber, I have used leather because I couldn't find any neoprene that was exactly the right thickness. Uh, so I'm about to make the strap, and I'm gonna make it on the uh, strap hanger here, and I'm gonna rivet it all together. Beautiful, exactly right. There's one. Nice. Now we're getting we're getting somewhere. I have battery power, I have switch. There you go, a working lens and the ability to focus it, which is pretty freaking cool if I say so myself. This goes there. Right, actually before I heat shrink these, I'm gonna test, hey, they work, totally work. Awesome, now I have lights, now it's a real thing. <laughs> this is awesome. This is really coming in just great. It's really, really, I'm really pleased with this. This, uh, yeah, it totally actually functions. And you've got the range finding. I made that a little smoky because I thought that was look better if it was smoky. Now it's time for some painting reference. There, excellent. There are some dings over here. It's like rub and buff, dry brush. So here's what I have to do the final black 
weather wash on here, which is some black acrylic paint, a little bit of water, a little bit of rubbing alcohol, and a, uh, a, a towel. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to make up a wet mixture of the acrylic paint. I'm gonna just paint it slathered on. I'm gonna try and pull it back off and I'm gonna keep on doing that. When I feel like I have it kind of close, but it might be a little too broad in its strokes because of my big brush, I'll hit it with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and that will help thin out the paint and make it go into the corners. It's gotta go into all these little interstices. That's what makes it look right when it gets inside that stuff. So here we go. Yep, already, already working. I love this process. It's my favorite part. It's the most scary. I'm not kidding. I'm always, I always am like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I hope this looks good. One more thing to add to this to weather it, and it is dirt. Here we go. This is, is this? Yeah. This is some Fuller's Earth. Um, I'm gonna hit this and, yep, give this a little bit of a dusting. Mm-hmm. Okay, there we go. There you have it. Deckard's Blade Runner 2049 binoculars. I know they're a little bit dirtier than the originals, but that's the way I like it. That's how I roll. Um, I want a, a big shout out to Jonathan Odom from Instructables for building these beautiful STL files and making them open to the public. Thank you, that was awesome. Uh, I had so much fun adding details to this and lights, We And lastly, thanks to Carbon 3D for printing these parts out. This is my first experience working with parts from your printer and I truly hope it's not the last. This was some fantastic plastic and fantastic resolution to work with. This has been a one day build. See you guys out in the field. Wait, 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 wait. I, I realized the whole video has been cut, but I totally forgot one key part, and that is the graphical element of the binoculars. There are two. There are rulered markings around the edge of this lens, and there is a little optical viewer sticker that goes here. I have worked them up in Photoshop and printed them on a couple of different silver papers. Uh, and this is some cool stuff, by the way. This is sort of a matte silver, which is perfect for the uh, optical markings, for the ruler markings around the lens. And then I found a high gloss silver paper that you can print from ink, excuse me, from laser onto. And that is freaking awesome because sometimes I have the need for metallic sticker details, especially in some of my Apollo hardware. And I I just didn't realize until I looked it up that you could print on silver paper. So I printed these out. It's time to apply them and finish this thing once and for all. Oh, whoops. Ah, it's not working. It's totally rubbing off. Okay, so my problem solving for the high silver uh, toner uh, printer paper will have to wait. I went with the matte, so I also have that. Yeah, I like that. Okay, let's see how it fits all the way around. And I'm happy with that. That's great. I have my two graphics right here. I'm going to need to give them some glue. So I'm gonna lay down some paper and spray glue them. There we go. Oh, nice. Excellent. Ah, it, it totally finishes it. Okay, and now the last part. So, because I did not make the um, divisions of this absolutely perfect to the uh, circumference of this lens, I am hiding the crime of the slight lack of alignment by starting this sticker bottom dead center, which is the least viewed part of this. That is a reasonable guide for exactly that kind of obfuscation of the lack of precision that 
off in a company's prop making. And look at that. Ah, oh, fantastic. I am really, really pleased with how that looks. There we go. Sorry for the false ending. Now the binoculars are done. I will see you guys in 2049.